an important problem in graph theory, identify the connected components of a graph. Remember, definitions are the whole of mathematics. All else is commentary. Two points U and V are in the same component if there is a path between them. So if we take any point U, we can find all points in the same component. By finding all points, we can reach from U. And if there are any points left over, we can lather, rinse, repeat. This leads to two different algorithms. First, we can use a depth first search from our starting vertex. Alternatively, we can use a breadth first search. So first, let's try to find the connected components of the graph shown using a depth first search. We'll start at vertex A. Using a depth first search and choosing the lowest lettered vertex to go to, from A, we'll go to E. then to B, then to J. Since J is connected to vertices we've already visited, we'll back up a step to B. But B is only connected to vertices we've already visited, so we'll back up another step to E, And again, E is only connected to vertices we've already visited, so we'll back up to A. And A is only connected to vertices we've already visited, and so that means the set A, E, B, J forms one connected component. Now vertex C is not part of a component, so we'll start at C, then from C we'll go to F, to H, to I. I only goes back to C, so we'll take a step back to H, and from H, we'll go to L. L only goes to vertices we've already visited, so we'll take a step back from H to F, and F only goes to vertices we've already visited, so we'll step back to C, and C only goes to vertices we've already visited, and it was our starting point. So C, F, H, I, L forms another connected component. We still haven't included D, so we'll start at D and go to G and then to K, which includes the last remaining vertices, giving us a third connected component. So alternatively, we can do a breadth first search. So again, we'll start at vertex A and we see that it's connected to vertices E and J. Vertex E is connected to vertices B and J, which we've already included. Vertex J is also connected to B and E. And vertex B is not connected to any new vertices, giving us A, E, J, B as our first component. Vertex C is connected to F, H, I, and L. None of these vertices are connected to any new vertices. So the second component is C, F, H, I, and L. And vertex D is connected to G and K, which form the last component. Both the depth first search and the breadth first search algorithms yield the connected components. Clearly, the better one to use is whichever one we use. In some cases, we can decide which one to use, provided we know something about the graph. For example, suppose a graph has 5,000 vertices and 100,000 edges. We'll choose a depth first or breadth first to find the connected components. So remember, the sum of the degrees is twice the number of edges. So with 100,000 edges, the degree sum must be 200,000, twice the number of edges. So the average degree of a vertex is 40. Consequently, a depth 
first search would require revisiting each vertex about 40 times to pick up all the paths from it. Meanwhile, a breadth-first search would add about 40 vertices to a component at each step. And so it seems that a breadth-first search would be more efficient. Maybe. What if we had a graph with lots of vertices and not so many edges? So here, the degree sum must be 10,000, so the average degree is 2. And this means a depth-first search might be more efficient. Maybe. The decision of whether to use a depth-first search or a breadth-first search depends partly on the graph characteristics. A more important factor is how we represent the graph. The visual representation of a graph is good for human comprehension as long as our graphs are small. What if we have large graphs? Well, that would actually be any graph. We'll take a look at that next.